Hi, my name is Patrick, and I'm going to show you how to install a Gary Fisher Evolution bottom bracket into a 1991 Gary Fisher Pro Caliber mountain bike. The Evolution series mountain bikes came out in the late 80s and lasted through the early 90s. Um, there is not much information online on installing this bottom bracket especially. Uh, so I wanted to include this as yet another example and also because it's different than everything else I've seen so far. Um, this mountain bike being a pro caliber, this was the Gary Fisher racing bike. Um, it's a little bit different in the respect that all the other bottom brackets have a retaining clip to hold these press fit bottom brackets in place. Um, whereas the pro caliber doesn't. Uh, I did not know this uh, until I just this last month uh, decided to overhaul the bottom bracket and it kind of freaked me out that I didn't have these retaining clips that I've seen on these videos and in websites around the internet. So that's why I'm making this video. One, to let you uh, know how to do the process and secondly, if you've got one of these Gary Fisher Pro Calibers, um, this is the way it's supposed to be. By the way, I want to give props to uh, a gentleman by the name of Forrest who has a, a YouTube channel that shows how to um, remove and install one of these bottom brackets as well as Old Shovel. Uh, and they actually have uh, footage of removing the bottom bracket, which unfortunately I don't have. But um, since mine is a little bit different, I figured I would make a video anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and show you what I've got in terms of parts and what's needed for the installation and then we'll just get right on into it. All right, so as far as parts, I just have my Gary Fisher Evolution bottom bracket spindle and it's got two sleeves on it, um, as well as the uh, sealed cartridge bearings, which are 6003 RS bearings. You can source them all over the place, including Amazon, auto parts stores, etc. Uh, as far as tools, I've got my uh, trusty hammer, which we'll be using, and I've got a one inch uh, socket that I'll be using to tap in the bearings with as well. Uh, as far as the other tools there, you can see I have um, a press for pressing in uh, headset bearings and bearings such as this. This was inspired by yet another uh, shout out to RJ the bike guy. Um, I just made the modification of putting a coupler uh, nut on there because it makes it a little easier to hold on with, with a wrench. Uh, and then the other tool I have is a, an open-ended wrench, an adjustable wrench that is. Um, and I ended up only using the small one. The large one wasn't necessary. I wasn't sure how much tension I would need to apply, but you'll see. Not much was needed. And of course, we'll use grease on the threads for the press, as well as the bottom bracket spindle. Uh, one thing that's not in this picture is the green Loctite that you use for bearings. Um, you'll see that in the video, though. All right, so I'm threading the uh, rod for the press here. Put the bearings in first, the fender washers, two fender washers, then a nylon washer and a flat washer. And uh, I had put a little lube on that uh, nylon washer to let it slip nice and easy. And then put the uh, <clears throat> coupling nut on there as well. little green Loctite. And this is the reason I'm wearing the gloves really is um, I don't like Loctite on my fingers. <laughs> so just uh, put a small amount, not too much, smear it around. Uh, that green Loctite can really hold severely. <laughs> so now I'm very carefully lining it up here um, and just getting it to seat evenly all around the shell there. I'm also carefully checking the alignment of the rod on the other side, easing it in, backing it out a little bit, and just making sure it's going in as straight as possible into the shell. And I barely snugged it with my fingers. And 
as I'm turning this wrench, I'm really barely pushing it at all. I mean, as you can see, I have one finger on it there. It is so going in buttery smooth. And basically I'm just getting it so uh, it's right up flush as far as I can push it on there uh, without pushing hard. All right, now for the other side, I turned the bike around in the stand. And now I've greased up the spindle, um, not the flats, uh, but the body of the spindle and under those two sleeves. And now I'm pushing it into that bearing. And I mentioned earlier, the sleeves uh, limit how far that spindle goes and how far in the bearings can actually go into this bottom bracket. There are no threads, it's just a tube. Now, I don't know if I mentioned I bought this bike new in 1991 and in 1992 or 93 I met Gary Fisher in person and when discussing the Gary Fisher uh, evolution bottom bracket and you know I was asking about it because at that time it was like voodoo only the techs knew how to operate on these things and he said you know what you're not going to have to worry about it probably for about 20 years 30 years later here I am. All right, so I had I got a little smidge of that Loctite on the spindle and I needed needed to get it off. And now I'm kind of doing what I did on the other side. I'm I'm making sure the the spindle is firmly in and centered. Um of course it has to be centered on the other side, but as far as I can get it in, and now I'm just kind of aligning that bearing very carefully. I'm not pushing very hard. Um in fact, it it spins nicely there too. It seats pretty easily um, <clears throat> and now there's the one inch socket and so the wall lines up with the edge of the bearing <sighs> Ugh. that still hurts and now I'm barely tapping this thing you can see how far up the hammer my hand is and I'm just kind of going around the, the socket while keeping it as straight as possible going into the shell. And I'd taken the socket off to just see, am I making any progress? Because it was really hard to tell. And I was kind of surprised at how easily it was going in there. But yeah, tapping around the the um, socket there also helps rather than just beating it in one place because, you know, you don't want it to go in at a weird angle. But I think once the, the body of that bearing is in the shell, it tends to center itself and slide in pretty easily. So I'm just trying to make sure that that thing is in all the way. I'm testing for play and I can feel some. <clears throat> Checking out that other side just to make sure that the bearing is fully inserted into the shell. Now I am hitting it a little harder this time because I felt like I just need to make sure that it's in there. I also had um, the shell of the bottom bracket 
coming just perfectly over that one inch socket. So I knew that I wasn't going to say miss hit it and hit the bearing seal and screw that up or anything. And you get a little bit of confidence doing this too. Now, here's what's interesting is um, on this non-drive side, the bearing goes in a little bit farther than on the drive side. And you'll see that in the pictures coming up or at the beginning of this video as well. This double check in, making sure everything's going good. I'm not feeling any play. Bearings are turning really nice and smooth. All right, and so now you can see the drive side where the bearing is pretty much flush with the shell and the non-drive side where that's uh, set in a little bit in relationship to the shell. Well, I hope that video was useful for somebody and I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.